Joseph Stalin, a name synonymous with terror and absolute power, emerged from the shadows of a tumultuous childhood in gory Georgia to etch his name indelibly into the annals of history as one of the most feared and powerful leaders of the 20th century. Born Yoseb Bessarionis Deza Yukashvili on December 18, 1878, he rose from the obscurity of a poverty-stricken upbringing to become the iron-fisted ruler of the Soviet Union. His rule, characterized by brutal purges, forced industrialization, and the chilling orchestration of political repression, left a legacy of horror and intrigue that continues to fascinate and horrify the world. Stalin's journey from an oppressed child in the Russian Empire to the architect of one of the most formidable and oppressive regimes in modern history is a shocking revelation of how power can corrupt and absolute power can corrupt absolutely. In Gori, a small town nestled in the heart of Georgia, young Yosef's life was steeped in the rich cultural and religious traditions of the region. His father, Basarian Jugashvili, was a cobbler and his mother, Ekaterine Galazzi, a house cleaner, instilled in him the values of hard work and resilience. However, his childhood was marred by familial strife, with his father's alcoholism casting a shadow over the household. The young Yugashvili's life took a dramatic turn when he contracted smallpox in the late 1800s. This illness left him with permanent facial scars, a physical reminder of the challenges he faced from an early age. Despite these hardships, he showed early signs of determination and intelligence, which led him to the Gori Church School. Here he was exposed to the teachings of the Eastern Orthodox Church, which dominated the spiritual life of the region. However, this religious education would soon clash with the radical ideas that began to shape his worldview. In 1894, at the age of 16, Jugashvili took a significant step in his educational journey by enrolling at the Tiflis Spiritual Seminary. This institution, one of the most prestigious religious schools in the Caucasus, was a center for Orthodox theological studies. However, it was also a hotbed for revolutionary thought, a fact that would profoundly influence young Jugashvili's ideological development. The seminary's strict discipline and rigorous curriculum were designed to prepare students for a life in the clergy, but for Jugashvili, it became a gateway to revolutionary ideas. The late 19th century was a period of immense social and political upheaval in the Russian Empire, with Marxist ideologies gaining traction among the intelligentsia and the oppressed classes. Yugashvili found himself increasingly drawn to these radical ideas, which offered a stark contrast to the religious teachings of the seminary. By the end of the 19th century, Yugashvili's involvement with Marxist propaganda had intensified. He began participating in underground reading circles where he was exposed to the works of Karl Marx and Vladimir Lenin. These texts, which criticized the existing social and political order and called for a proletarian revolution, resonated deeply with him. His growing engagement with Marxist activities did not go unnoticed by the seminary authorities. In 1899, Yugashvili's academic and revolutionary pursuits collided when he was expelled from the Tiflis Spiritual Seminary. Officially, his expulsion was due to his failure to take exams, but it was widely understood that his involvement in revolutionary activities was the true cause. This expulsion marked a turning point in Yugashvili's life. No longer bound by the constraints of religious education, he fully embraced the revolutionary cause. This decision set him on a path that would eventually lead him to the heart of the Bolshevik movement and to the pinnacle of power in the Soviet Union. His transformation from a seminary student to a revolutionary ideologue was complete, signaling the beginning of a journey that would leave an indelible mark on the 20th century. After his expulsion from the Tiflis Spiritual Seminary in 1899, Joseph Stalin, then known as Iosib Yugashvili, plunged into the turbulent world of revolutionary politics. This period of his life, spanning from the early 20th century to the eve of the Russian Revolution, was characterized by his deepening involvement in radical activities, 
personal tragedies, and the adoption of a new identity that would define his future. In 1901, Stalin's journey into revolutionary politics gained momentum when he joined the Russian Social Democratic Labor Party, RSDLP. This was a period of great political unrest in the Russian Empire, with the RSDLP playing a central role in organizing labor strikes and protests against the Tsarist regime. Stalin, with his keen intellect and growing commitment to Marxist ideology, quickly became an active member of the party. He was involved in organizing workers in the industrial heartlands of Georgia, displaying both his organizational skills and his ability to inspire and mobilize the proletariat. Stalin's activities soon attracted the attention of the Tsarist police. From 1902 to 1913, he faced multiple arrests and subsequent exiles to Siberia, a common punishment for political dissidents in the Russian Empire. These exiles were meant to isolate and neutralize political agitators, but for Stalin they served as periods of reflection and further radicalization. In the harsh and remote landscapes of Siberia, he honed his ideological beliefs and built connections with other revolutionaries. In the midst of his revolutionary endeavors, Stalin's personal life took a significant turn. In 1906, he married Ekaterina Svanitsa, a union that brought a brief period of personal happiness. Their son Yakov was born in 1907. However, this joy was short-lived, as tragedy struck with Ekaterina's death later that same year. The loss of his wife was a profound blow to Stalin, leaving him a widower with a young son amidst the chaos of his revolutionary life. A pivotal moment in Stalin's transformation came in 1912 when he adopted the name Stalin, meaning Man of Steel in Russian. This name change was symbolic, representing a break from his past and a commitment to his revolutionary persona. The name Stalin embodied the toughness, determination, and unwavering resolve that would become hallmarks of his character in the years to come. The period leading up to the Russian Revolution saw Stalin exiled to Siberia once again, from 1913 to 1917. These years were a time of significant political upheaval in Russia. The First World War had begun, and the Tsarist regime was facing increasing internal dissent and external challenges. Meanwhile, Stalin, isolated in Siberia, continued his revolutionary activities, writing and staying in contact with other Bolshevik leaders. It was during this exile that the February Revolution of 1917 occurred, a momentous event that would change the course of Russian history. The abdication of Tsar Nicholas II and the subsequent establishment of a provisional government created a power vacuum and a unique opportunity for the Bolsheviks. Stalin, upon his return from exile, found a dramatically altered political landscape, ripe for the next phase of the revolution. Stalin's experiences during these formative years, from his early political activism to his repeated exiles and personal tragedies, played a crucial role in shaping his character and political outlook. By the time of the February Revolution, he had evolved from a young seminary student into a seasoned revolutionary, ready to play a leading role in the tumultuous events that would soon unfold in Russia. His story during this period is a testament to his resilience and adaptability, qualities that would serve him well as he navigated the complex and often brutal world of revolutionary politics. As the Russian Empire crumbled and a new era dawned, Stalin stood at the forefront, prepared to imprint his vision upon the emerging Soviet state. The rise of Joseph Stalin from a revolutionary activist to a dominant figure in the Bolshevik party, culminating in his appointment as the General Secretary of the Communist Party in 1922, is a tale of political acumen, strategic maneuvering, and an unyielding quest for power. In 1917, following the tumultuous February Revolution that led to the abdication of Tsar Nicholas II and the establishment of a provisional government in Russia, Stalin made a significant return to Petrograd, then the heart of Russian political turmoil. This period marked the collapse of the centuries-old Tsarist autocracy and the emergence of new political forces vying for control. 
The provisional government, led primarily by moderate socialists, sought to maintain order, but was increasingly challenged by the Bolsheviks, who called for immediate peace, land to peasants, and power to the Soviets. Stalin's return to Petrograd coincided with a period of intense political and social upheaval. The city, a melting pot of revolutionary fervor and political intrigue, provided the perfect backdrop for his ascent. In this environment, Stalin's pragmatism and shrewdness began to surface. He took on various roles within the Bolshevik party, showcasing his organizational skills and ideological commitment. His positions included editorship at Pravda, the party's newspaper, and a place in the party's central committee. These roles allowed Stalin to exert increasing influence over party policies and direction. The October Revolution of 1917, which saw the Bolsheviks seize power in Russia, was a turning point. Under Lenin's leadership, the Bolsheviks overthrew the provisional government and established a new socialist government. Stalin's role in the revolution, though not as prominent as Lenin's or Trotsky's, was significant. He was involved in the planning and execution of the uprising, further consolidating his position in the party. In the years following the Bolshevik takeover, Russia was engulfed in a brutal civil war between the Red Army, aligned with the Bolsheviks, and the White Army, consisting of anti-Bolshevik forces. During this chaotic period, Stalin held several governmental positions, including People's Commissar for Nationalities Affairs and later for the Workers and Peasants Inspectorate. His role in managing the affairs of the various nationalities within the former Russian Empire was crucial, as it was a time marked by significant ethnic and territorial conflicts. The most critical juncture in Stalin's rise to power came in 1922, when he was appointed as the General Secretary of the Communist Party. This position, initially viewed as administrative and non-threatening by many of his contemporaries, allowed Stalin to amass unparalleled control over the party apparatus. Through this role, he appointed allies to key positions, built a loyal base within the party, and gathered information on his political rivals. The general secretary position, underestimated by many, became the foundation of Stalin's eventual total control over the Soviet Union. This period of Stalin's life, from his return to Petrograd in 1917 to his appointment as general secretary in 1922, was characterized by his ability to navigate the complex and often deadly landscape of Bolshevik politics. His rise to power was not marked by dramatic military feats or fiery oratory, as seen in some of his contemporaries, but rather by a careful, methodical consolidation of power within the party. Stalin's ascent can be attributed to his understanding of the internal dynamics of the Bolshevik party, his ability to exploit the weaknesses of his adversaries, and his relentless pursuit of power. By 1922, he had positioned himself not just as a high-ranking official in the Soviet government, but as a central figure in the future direction of the Soviet state. His journey from a marginal figure in the party to its general secretary was a testament to his political skill and foreshadowed the authoritarian rule he would later impose upon the Soviet Union. The period of Joseph Stalin's rule over the Soviet Union from 1924 until his death in 1953 was marked by a combination of extensive industrialization, ruthless political maneuvering, and widespread terror. This era saw Stalin transform the Soviet Union into a major world power, but at a tremendous cost to its people and its political structure. In 1924, the death of Vladimir Lenin, the revered leader of the Bolshevik Revolution, created a power vacuum in the nascent Soviet Union. Stalin, who had been appointed General Secretary of the Communist Party in 1922, began his steady ascent to absolute power. Lenin's death left the party leadership divided, with prominent figures like Leon Trotsky, Lev Kamenev, and Grigory Zinoviev vying for influence. Stalin, often underestimated by his rivals, used his position to outmaneuver them, consolidating his control over the party. 
By the late 1920s, Stalin had effectively eliminated all his rivals and became the unchallenged leader of the Soviet Union. He then launched the first five-year plan in 1928, an ambitious program aimed at rapidly industrializing the country. The plan focused on heavy industry, such as steel and coal production, and aimed to transform the Soviet Union from a rural agrarian society into an industrial powerhouse. The plan was implemented with ruthless efficiency, but the human cost was enormous, with millions of people uprooted, labor camps swelled, and a widespread famine, especially in Ukraine, known as the Holodomor. Concurrent with industrialization was the collectivization of agriculture. Stalin aimed to modernize agriculture by consolidating individual peasant farms into large state-controlled collectives. This policy was met with fierce resistance from peasants, leading to widespread repression, confiscation of grain and livestock, and devastating famine. The human toll of collectivization was staggering, with millions dying from starvation and repression. The assassination of Sergei Kirov, a high-ranking and popular party official in 1934, marked the beginning of the Great Purge, one of the darkest and most brutal chapters of Stalin's rule. Kirov's murder was used as a pretext to launch a massive campaign of political repression. The Great Purge lasted from 1936 to 1938, during which time Stalin purged the Communist Party of real and perceived enemies. Old Bolsheviks, who had been comrades of Lenin, high-ranking military leaders, intellectuals, and ordinary citizens, were arrested, tried in show trials, and often executed or sent to the Gulag, the Soviet system of labor camps. In 1939, in a shocking turn of events, Stalin signed the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact with Nazi Germany, a non-aggression treaty that also included secret protocols dividing Eastern Europe into Soviet and German spheres of influence. This pact stunned the world and paved the way for the start of World War II. However, the fragile peace with Germany was shattered in 1941 when Hitler launched Operation Barbarossa, the largest military invasion in history against the Soviet Union. The German invasion caught the Soviet Union unprepared, partly due to Stalin's purges of the military leadership in the preceding years. The initial months of the war were catastrophic for the Soviet Union, with vast territories occupied and millions of soldiers captured or killed. Despite these setbacks, Stalin managed to rally the Soviet Union against the German invasion. He took on an increasingly active role in military strategy, often with disastrous results due to his lack of military experience. However, the sheer size of the Soviet Union, the harsh winter, and the resilience of the Soviet people, combined with massive aid from the Allies, eventually turned the tide of the war. The Soviet Union played a crucial role in the defeat of Nazi Germany, with the Red Army capturing Berlin in May 1945. Stalin's leadership during World War II was characterized by brutal tactics, including the use of penal battalions, mass deportations of ethnic minorities accused of collaborating with the enemy, and a disregard for high military casualties. The victory in World War II left the Soviet Union as one of the two superpowers in a bipolar world, setting the stage for the Cold War. Stalin's rule over the Soviet Union was marked by paradoxes. He transformed the country into an industrial and military superpower, but his policies led to the deaths of millions and the suffering of many more. His leadership during World War II contributed to the defeat of Nazi Germany, yet his ruthless tactics left deep scars on the Soviet Union and its people. Stalin's legacy remains one of the most controversial in history, embodying the extremes of political power and the human capacity for both transformation and destruction. In the aftermath of World War II, Joseph Stalin's Soviet Union emerged as a global superpower, rivaling the United States. This post-war period under Stalin was marked by significant geopolitical developments, internal purges, and the dramatic culmination of his rule. The year 1945 was pivotal, 
The Yalta and Potsdam conferences, where Stalin met with Allied leaders Winston Churchill and Franklin D. for Roosevelt, later succeeded by Harry S. and Truman, reshaped the post-war world. At Yalta, they discussed the reorganization of post-Nazi Europe and the fate of Poland, a topic of particular interest to Stalin, who sought to establish a buffer zone of friendly governments in Eastern Europe. The Potsdam Conference later in the year solidified these decisions, setting the stage for the division of Europe and the onset of the Cold War. Stalin's insistence on Soviet influence in Eastern Europe and his refusal to permit free elections in Poland were seen in the West as evidence of his expansionist intentions, leading to an escalating series of confrontations with the United States and its allies. In 1949, the geopolitical balance shifted dramatically when the USSR successfully tested its first atomic bomb, breaking the United States' monopoly on nuclear weapons. This achievement, hastened by espionage and the work of Soviet scientists, was a defining moment in Stalin's reign, catapulting the Cold War into a nuclear age. The Soviet Union's nuclear capability intensified the arms race and deepened the ideological divide between the capitalist West and the communist East. The early 1950s were marked by Stalin's increasing paranoia and deteriorating health. He launched another purge, known as the Doctor's Plot, in 1952-53. to This alleged conspiracy, in which a group of predominantly Jewish doctors were accused of plotting to assassinate Soviet leaders, was indicative of Stalin's growing suspicion and anti-Semitism. The Doctor's Plot led to the arrest and torture of numerous medical professionals and was accompanied by a wider campaign against rootless cosmopolitans, a euphemism for Jews. This episode reflected the climate of fear and repression that pervaded the Soviet Union during Stalin's rule, where accusations and show trials often had fatal consequences. Stalin's death on March 5, 1953, marked the end of an era. He died of a stroke, and there were allegations of foul play, though none were ever proven. The Soviet Union and the world reacted with a mixture of relief and apprehension. Under Stalin, the USSR had transformed from a peasant society into an industrial and military superpower. However, this transformation came at an immense human cost. Political purges, forced labor camps, widespread famine, and relentless suppression of dissent. Stalin's legacy is complex and contentious. His policies of industrialization and collectivization, while modernizing the Soviet Union, resulted in the deaths and suffering of millions. His ruthless approach to political power, characterized by purges and terror, left a lasting imprint on Soviet society. The Great Patriotic War, World War II, had elevated Stalin to heroic status among many Soviets, yet his post-war policies contributed to the onset of the Cold War a geopolitical struggle that would dominate the latter half of the 20th century. Stalin's death signaled a shift in Soviet politics and policies. His successor, Nikita Khrushchev, denounced his cult of personality and began the process of de-Stalinization, seeking to dismantle the legacy of terror and authoritarianism. However, the impact of Stalin's rule, both on the Soviet Union and the broader international landscape, would continue to be felt for decades to come. His reign, characterized by both remarkable achievements and horrific atrocities, remains a deeply controversial chapter in the history of the 20th century. If this narrative resonated with you, do support us. Hit that like button Drop a comment with your thoughts and subscribe. Thank you for staying with us to the end. See you in the next video on Plaid Chronicles.